Hello there, I'm Joe from IST Group and in today's video I would like to show you how to add a ribbon control to a WiseJ application. The ribbon was introduced a couple of years ago by Microsoft when they extended the application's main menu with a ribbon of buttons. Of course WiseJ provides such a ribbon control as well and I would like to show you how to install and how to use it. So let's start with the simple web page application. Let's call it test as always. And as always, it takes a little time. Okay. So what I need now is my error list. I need my toolbox. And let's look at our application. And no surprise, it's empty. So what would you do? You would like to add a ribbon to the page but there's no such control. So what do you do? Go to Reference, right-click, NuGet Packages, change to NuGet, Browse, and now we could uh, look for Ribbon Bar. And there we go, YSJ2 Ribbon Bar. Let's install this. Okay, that's it here. And now, when we search in the toolbox, ribbon, uh, of course, I have to spell it correctly. Okay, and there we go. We have a ribbon, and no wonder, it's empty. Um, the ribbon is an extension of YSJ. Uh, YSJ comes uh, with many, many uh, extensions. Uh, I uh, suggest you look at uh, the GitHub repository of the extensions to see uh, what uh, controls are available. There's plenty of them. But for now we focus on the ribbon and uh, before we do anything else we will need some images and I have prepared some images, some remnant images which I drag into the solution. Okay, now we have them available. The ribbon itself um, is by default docked to the top of uh, the page. You might uh, want to leave it there, but it can also be docked uh, everywhere. Docking is uh, universal and it applies to even to the ribbon bar, even if you would only want it on the top of the page. Um, another interesting uh, uh, property is the image list. You could add an image list to uh, the form and uh, um, retrieve all the images from this image list, but uh, we we'll use individual images for all our buttons in this test application. So let's leave this one blank. A very interesting property is the pages property, uh, which is the f usually the first thing that you might want to launch. And the pages, there we go. We'll add one page. You see the page is displayed here. If we add another page, it will be uh, it will be uh, displayed as well. But we don't need more than one page right now for this test application. So let's remove that so that so we don't get distracted. Okay. So what what um, properties are available? Of course, a text. Let's call this start, for example. Um, you could enable or disable such a tab or a page on the ribbon. Uh, look at the um, page. When I click this property, it is disabled or enabled. Okay, you can also check visible to false and the tab disappears completely. But on such a tab, we also need some groups. So let's open that, add a group. How uh, should we call this group? Uh, let's call it edit. Okay, now we have the group, but there are uh, no items. So let's add an item. And there are several items available. Let's, uh, let's uh, select the button. Let's call this uh, button exit, for example. 
Let's uh, add another button and call it new. Uh, and because I, j I can, I add another uh, button that we call, uh, let's say, edit. OK, such a button has various properties, for example, an image source. So let's use the first button, image source, and let's add something. Doesn't matter. The image it itself doesn't matter now. It's just a test application. Um, let's add an image to the second one. And because it's fun, let's add an image to the third one. OK, now I want to separate the edit button from the new button. So I'll add a separator, there it is, but it's on the wrong position, so move it up one step. It's not shown here, but if I close, it's, it's there. The screen is not updated as long as you are in the collection editors. OK, now we have three buttons. That's uh, pretty nice, so let's add um, some other buttons. Uh, button one, two, that's enough for now. I select both, both of these new buttons and change their orientation to horizontal. Now you see there are no longer uh, big buttons like these one, but there are small buttons which are displayed horizontally. To make this clearer, let's add some images here. For example, this one and another one. Okay, so because I used an info button, let's call this one info, and the other one I used the refresh button, uh, uh, the refresh image, let's call it refresh. Okay, now you see they are stacked on top of the, each other, and they are much smaller. Okay, what else can I show you? Um, the buttons have an image source, a text. They, you can, of course, have uh, tooltips. Um, refresh a button. Refresh button. OK, now when I run this application, I see the tooltip. All buttons are enabled now. Let's see what happens if we disable one. Go back to pages. Go back to the group. And in the group we have the items. And let's uh, disable this one. You see it's grayed out. I can even make it disappear completely by, ch by changing the visible property. Okay, the next topic is what happens if I click on these buttons. For example, I can select one of these, go to the events, and implement a click property. Let's do some sh something here. Dot show button clicked. Now when I run the application, I forgot which one it was. Oh, that one. Button clicked. So whenever I click on this button, I have the event. But that seems kind of clumsy to add an event to each of the buttons. You could also implement a general event on the ribbon. I selected the ribbon, and there is an item click property. Now let's use that one. And let's get rid of this one. Now I expect to get an error. There it is. And remove this event handler from the designer. OK, now when I run the application, doesn't matter on which button I click, I always get the event. 
So I have a central place where I see uh, the event being fired. Uh, but I have to distinguish between uh, the buttons. I have to know which button is which. Uh, so I can use the uh, event arcs for this. If I type E and the dot, I see that the item is passed here, so I know which item has been clicked. Okay, so one more thing. I have selected the button group, and uh, the button group has a property called show button. And if I click this, I get this little uh, icon here, and the group has an event, a clicked event, and let's implement another message box, uh, group icon has been clicked. Of course, let's run the application. Click on this, and it says group icon has been clicked. Very nice. So that's basically all you need for the ribbon. Here's the general uh, event handler for items being clicked. And we have a general event handler for the, for the group's um, uh, group icon. So what we have to do also is we have to enable uh, buttons uh, uh, and disable them. We're almost at the end, but I wanted to show in this video one more thing. At any given state of your application, some buttons uh, are enabled while others might not be enabled. You need a way to handle the enabled state of the buttons in a nice and easy way, and this is where the idle event comes in handy. So let's see what we can do with the idle event. Uh, event. First of all, we need the uh, event itself. Application dot idle. Add. That's fine. Okay. Now we have the idle event. Something has to happen here. First of all, we have to implement something to change the state of the application so we can see something. So, so I'll add a button. The name doesn't matter. I need an event. Um, I need a variable to hold the state. And whenever the user clicks the button, I said button enabled equals to not button enabled. So this toggles the state. This holds the state, and now I can say that uh, the but uh, one of the buttons has to be enabled or disabled. So I select this one. And the name of this is ribbon bar item button two. So ribbon bar item button two dot enabled equals button enabled. So what we div did now is we implemented a variable that reflects the state of the application. We have a button that toggles this state and in the idle event, the enable state of this specific button is set by the state of the application. Now let's run it. Whenever I click on this button, the other button gets enabled or disabled. Okay, that's a neat trick to handle uh, enabled and disabled states of the application. Uh, details um, about the idle event can be found on Google in the Microsoft Docs. Uh, it's a handy event to deal with the state of the application. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye-bye.